Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining the Behind Company Lines podcast. Today we have Arun Sagal, CEO of Thunkable, the no-code platform to build powerful native mobile apps. Arun, I'm so excited to chat with you. As I mentioned before the show, I'm really excited about just the no-code platform space in general and in how it not only offers non-technical founders the capability to bring on products, but also even technical teams to be able to add features and move quickly with the different sprint sessions and, and really just the, what it offers in terms of the ability to, to get powerful apps online and in front of consumers and starting to work on products. Being a founder myself, I'm really excited about how things progress and how quickly tools and, and platforms like what you're building at Thunkable allow other companies to do so as well. But before we get into Thunkable and, and how things are going and, and what you're building and the whole process, what were you doing before you started the company? Absolutely. It's, it's great to be here. So excited to, to chat with you. Before building this company, give you a little bit of the story. So directly before I was working with, with another friend who had started a tech company and was working with him on building that, leading the mobile team there where I experienced firsthand the pain of, of mobile app development for both for non-developers with the, the people I was working with yeah. and how they didn't have really any control over what I was building. They obviously gave me opinions, but really had to wait on me and my team to, to build things, as well as even the pain that we as software engineers were experiencing, where just to make a small change, I want to change the color blue. Okay, well, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to install the app on my phone and I'm going to have to see if it looks good. And if it doesn't, I'm going to have to go back and do it again. And, you know, spend 15 minutes to even make a tiny change. And so that was really what I was doing directly before. But maybe just give you a bit of context. As you said, Thunkable is the no-code platform for build native mobile apps. And it actually started as a research collaboration between Google and MIT. When I was an undergrad and graduate student at MIT, we were working on thinking about how to make it easy for anyone and everyone to build native mobile apps. So yeah. if you don't know how to code and you want to build an app for, for the iPhone or for your Android device or, or any smartphone, how do you go about and do that? And it was a cool time where we're talking late 2000s into, into the 2010s where smartphones ha had just come out and people knew the, these were powerful devices and they were going to change the world, but no one quite knew how. And so for me and, and my team, we said, it's not just about making sure that these devices are super powerful. It's about giving people access to tools to build on these devices so that they're not just going to be active consumers of the content on these, passive consumers of the content on these devices, but actually be active creators. Because in our mind, it wasn't about enabling people to use apps that existed on a powerful platform, but by giving them the ability to create the technology that they needed to use, we felt it would unlock a world of possibilities. And so we spent the time to build this platform and it's been mind blowing to see how from that research project, we went to millions of users all over the world creating apps. And then, like I said, I left MIT, worked on, worked on this ed tech company for, for a number of years where I saw really firsthand the, the struggles of building mobile apps and then decided to take that research project out of the lab and turn it into Thunkable in 2016, and that's what's gotten us to where we are today. Yeah, it's, it's incredible to think about the, the process of within building of, of no code platform and discuss to the audience who don't know what goes into having it be able to communicate with different languages and being able to upload and, and different apps configure and all the different, I, I guess, I guess requirements that an application needs to be able to not only go from idea, but go into people's pockets and start being able to be used. What, what goes into building a no code platform and, and how how long was that process? How, how long did it take you to get, get the platform to, to a place where you could start shipping out and have people using it and, and getting that user feedback? Mobile app development is a really cool and exciting process. And it's also fairly challenging. If you compare it to, let's say, web development, when you're building a website, you, you can kind of, you write a bunch of code or you can use a no-code web development tool. And there's a couple of nice things. One, as you're making changes, you can see the changes immediately because everybody has a browser pretty much on their on their computer. And so as you're making some changes, you can just run it in your browser, in your, your Chrome or your Firefox or Safari or whatever. It, it, it's easy to kind of make quick changes and test it. And then when, when you're ready, depending on how you've set it up, you can just kind of push it directly to the web. You push it directly to the internet and there's no there's no gates or anything. There's no one who kind of, runs the internet or runs the yeah. web. It's, it's an open platform for anyone to publish to. And so it becomes 
really, really kind of fast and easy to make changes, make updates, et cetera. On mobile, it's, it's a totally different experience for, for a couple of reasons. One, the considerations you have to make are just a lot more. So mm -hmm. you have to think about things like offline support. Does the app actually work offline? What happens if someone's using it on their phone and they're driving through yeah. the tunnel? How does the app keep working? The thing number two is there's just a high expectation of what your apps can do. Everyone expects that their app will work nicely with push notifications, work offline, like I said, plug into your hardware. I want to, if I have an app, I should be able to just open my camera from within the app, take a photo, upload that photo somewhere and do something with that photo or take my audio, my speech, or think about how you're using, say, YouTube, and then it goes picture in picture while you're using another app. There's a lot, lot of expectation from your app that you don't yeah. necessarily have from websites. So I think the first thing is it's, it's, it's a fairly high expectation and a high bar of what to build. And so you really need to make sure you're building it to, to satisfy all these user expectations. And then the next thing is form factors. You have to expect that it works on a, on a tiny, small phone, that it scales up to a tablet and, and works for everything in between. And that, that's the next thing, thinking about that. And then finally, when you've built the app that you're really excited about, you've built the app of your dream, you need to make sure that related to those form factors that it also think about a Think about a news app that it can change midway through. So if I'm in portrait, it works one way. And then if I rotate, right, rotate the landscape, all of a sudden, maybe I have a second panel that opens my news articles or yeah. a second panel that opens my email articles. Once I made the app work well in one, one position on one form factor, I need to be able to make sure it works, it rotates and, and et cetera. And then once you've made the app that you're really excited about, you need to actually get it published. And that yeah. means you have to package it up and put it in a, in a, in a form that the Apple App Store will accept, hmm. build a separate app in a form that the Google Play Store, Google's Play Store will accept. And then if you want it to work on mobile web and things like that, that's, that's another situation, which means you need to spit out different kinds of code because to make a mobile app with work with Apple, you have to spit out kind of Apple code. They have, they have their own coding tools and coding languages that work with them, Swift and, and Objective-C, things like that. Yeah. Similarly on Google, you, used to, you need to use Google's coding languages that they like. Java, yeah. Kotlin, et cetera. And then on web, there's yet another, another set of languages you need to support. So when you're building, when you're building it, just one app, you actually have to build it kind of multiple times usually. And yeah. then you have to publish it in the app stores. Unlike the web, as I said, no one really owns the internet. The app stores are owned by companies. So you need to publish it according to Google and Apple's rules when you're going to their stores. It needs to yeah. look and feel like an app should look and feel for them. It needs to, it needs to support their use cases and their guidelines. It needs to support their login mechanisms. It needs to support payments and they want, and the way they want payments to be supported, et cetera, which makes it a lot, a lot higher bar to get something out there. And they, they'll actually review your apps and tell you, hey, we approve this or no, we don't like this app. You need to go make these changes and come back to us, right? So, yeah. so it's a lot longer process. And, and, and that's actually one of the reasons why no code tools are so nice. And we can talk about this more, but it's because it really lets you dig in to the parts that you want to and not worry too much about the things you don't want to. So for yeah. example, if you build an app once on Thunkable, it will already work on Google infrastructure and on Apple's infrastructure. So you can launch it directly to the Google Play Store and to Apple's App Store and to the web without needing to build three separate apps. You can just build it once on us and it works. You don't need yeah. to worry about the offline cable of that will it work offline. We make sure that it works offline. If Apple and Google need to make upgrades, remember there's a big thing also where Apple and Google are upgrading their operating systems and their phones every year, which yeah. means that you need to upgrade the apps that you're building for these phones every year. With yeah. Alphabet, we automatically take care of that under the hood. So, you know, when these operating systems get updated in one year, we'll, we'll automatically make sure the upgrades are taken care of for you. So you don't need yeah. to put in all that extra effort to actually do that. So there, there's so many kind of complexities to building mobile apps. And one of the real joys of no code tools and, and, and Thunkable is that we take care of a lot of kind of that mental overhead that you don't need to worry about. So you can yeah. worry about building the, the app of your dreams. You can worry about building the cool, innovative thing that you're doing that no one else is doing without worrying about, oh, do I need to deal with this upgrade or, oh, does this, will this publish directly to app stores? We'll take care of all of that for you. You can focus on the real creative genius behind your app.
Yeah. Yeah. It's so fascinating to think about just the ability to, to bring applications online and not have to think about what, what a lot of founders and developers think about all the time, which is the update, but the, the, you having to be within regulations or compliance of certain platforms. Or other. What does that mean in regards to kind of the future of, of businesses for founders in particular, if they, ha if they can minimize that amount of time they're spending on that production, right? And can spend it on fundraising or acquiring new clients or hiring a team. How does that change the landscape of companies and also in your opinion, how does that change the velocity that they move at? That, that is the biggest game changer in my mind. So it, now yeah. there's a couple things that we, we unlock. First of all, all of a sudden, anyone who has a great idea can build an app, right? When someone says, yeah. oh, if only there was an app for that, now they can actually create that app. Yeah. And what is really cool about that is it's no longer the idea people have to be different than the folks actually building the software. When they can be the same person, that means one, the ideas can be built in the exact way that it was envisioned in the, uh, yeah. in the mind of the creator. And that's huge. The second yeah. is that they can move a lot faster because now you're not going from idea person to product manager, to designer, to developer, back to the designer, back to the PN, back to the, the person with the idea. Now you've taken that whole chain and, and, and the idea person can be the product manager, can be the designer and can be the developer. And that mm -hmm. just makes it so much more efficient and makes it, again, come to life in the way the initial person thought because it doesn't get lost in, in, in a game of telephone. N next of all, when you don't have to worry about uh, all this other overhead we talked about, when you don't have to worry about the maintenance and updating the app in and, and updating the app when the operating system change or dealing with any of kind of these, these what I consider overhead changes and not the core functionality, what that allows for all of a sudden is you to spend your time doing the things that are most important to the business, right? It's nice. actually building out your creative ideas. And as you talked about, it's fundraising, it's team hiring. I, I remember when I was, I was an Android developer building an app in, in, in the early 2010s. And then Google came out with this awesome uh, material design, which really, I think, elevated their design game and the look and feel of Android app. And it was so cool. But I remember it launched and they said, oh, everybody needs to upgrade to material design. And all of a sudden I had to change my whole roadmap and spend two months of my team's time redoing our entire app when I hadn't planned it because they yeah. made an update and I had to deal with it. And again, the apps looked a lot better and I, I'm glad they did it, but it wasn't part of my plans to deal with. And all of a yeah. sudden I had, well, with Sunkable, we take care of those upgrades and, 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 and overhead changes when you say, when, when we get told, hey, these things are being done, we deal with it under the hood. You just come to Funkable and say, hey, upgrade, publish again, and it's done. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, your roadmap isn't just being changed from under you. And, and the things you get to spend your money and time on are building the creative, awesome things that you're trying to build and not worrying about, oh, do I need to change the curve of my button now? Or, oh, do I need to make sure I upgrade to this SDK version 47 instead of 46? You don't need to worry about that. We'll deal with all of that for you. And you get to work on well, the things that make your company great. Yeah. But one thing that makes me think about is, is the idea that a lot of founders, or not the idea, but the, 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 the situation a lot of founders find themselves in when they start building their MVP and they have that initial product build, which is the technical debt that comes with however they, they've come to build it to thus far. And typically if they work with like a dev shop, there's a lot of technical debt that's associated with it. But how does, how does a product like Dunkable, I, I guess in my mind, it seems like it would minimize that because of its ability to update quickly and, and really organize the development process in a very structured way that if they needed to graduate from the, the, the product into something a little bit more personalized or unique to that business, depending on what they do, it, it could be a much easier transition into that. So I, I have two questions. One is, how do you think about technical debt and how does Dunkable, products like Dunkable kind of consider that? And then two, are there any limitations or, or, or is there a point in time where someone can graduates from Thunkable or does it essentially scale with them? So on the first question around technical debt, I think what's really cool about no code tools is again, as I've talked about with handling your overhead, we, we really help remove a lot of the technical debt that you often face. And there's, there's a, there's a few reasons we have this one. When you build anything, you're, you're using in Thunkable, you're using basically, we're just an abstraction on top of the native code. So let's say you, you build something that's relatively complicated. Like when I push a button, 
pull up some hardware sensor, pull up my camera. Let's see. Yeah, let's talk about that. You pull up my camera and take a photo and send that photo to some server. Now to do that, it's an asynchronous call. It's, it's a little bit complicated. And a lot of people often will kind of do some hacks around to get it working and then never come back to it. Well, with us, when you say open my camera, we basically have a bunch of code that runs under the hood to do a really good and efficient job of opening your camera in the right and cleanest way. And so what's good about that is kind of you, you're, when you use Thunkable, you know that the code that's being written is kind of the best code out there. It's, it, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's industry standard, high quality code. And so you're not poking around saying, hey, I don't really know how to do this. So I'm going to hack some stuff together because we've already done it the, the right way under the hood. And so you can trust that when you're building something with us, that you'll actually have excellent, really efficient, high quality code because we take the yeah. time to write it once and then know that it's going to work everywhere across the board. And so yeah. that's one of the really nice things is kind of that that ends up relieving you from a lot of the technical debt that you might otherwise have because we we take on that load and deal with it under the hood. Yeah. And the second point that or related to that, you talked about kind of using development shops and then the technical debt accumulating over time. Again, I think one of the bigger things you see with mobile app development is your costs to actually get something built are are usually relatively high in, yeah. in traditional app development. Your cost to maintain it is actually significantly higher. That's where really the, 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 the biggest money goes. And so let's say you hire a development shop, they go build an app, they hand it off to you. They do, let's assume they do a good job. They hand it off to you. Now, over the years, you want to keep maintaining it. It's going to either cost you a bunch of money to keep paying them, or it's something that you're going to have to hire for, maintain in-house, et cetera. Now with Thunkable and things like us, once you build a kind of a, an app on our platform, it works. And then as you go on over time, like I said, things like the upgrading certain SDKs under the hood or or making sure there's software kind of under the hood that works and, and that it's maintained and upgraded over time. We deal with all of that so you can trust that you're using best in class software when when you're building an app with Thunkable. So both when you launch, but then especially over time, you have that yeah. ability. And I think that is really one of one of the unique things that when you think about long term, which leads to your second question, you think yeah. about long term, you can trust working with with the no code tool will actually make sure that your your app stays relevant and upgraded and, and excellent yeah. over time and doesn't slow down or fall behind because of all kind of the technical debt that weighs on on a lot of apps and a lot of companies. And that leads, I think, to your second point, which 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 is really around how do you scale with with a tool like Thunkable? How do no code tools scale? And I think one of the really nice part about using a tool like Thunkable is that we are built to scale. And so if you look at the app stores today, there are, there are many apps out there that use us that have millions of downloads and hundreds of thousands of downloads and, and continue yeah. to thrive on us years later. And the really nice thing is because of the way we, we are built, we really built ourselves to be able to scale with you so that you never have to think about moving on or moving off. For us, we really try and be on the kind of cutting edge of what is out there. So when, again, one of these big, big software providers around smartphones are releasing new and exciting capabilities, we're plugging into them. When you have right now where we are, let's say AI and ChatGPT came, came out in, in its most recent form a few months ago, and people were all excited about it. Within a couple of weeks, we were yeah. integrated with them and you could use that directly in our, in our platform. Right. And so whatever is new and exciting, you can you can wait and Thunkable will have it soon after. And we're going to have it work in a really nice, robust way so you can trust that it'll work. And so as you scale, it's actually really easy to scale and rely on Thunkable because of the fact that we've built our products so that the apps, the content, things like that, that you've built on us will scale and will last kind of year after year after year. And that's that's one of, again, the really nice things about using the tool like this is you can kind of build on us and then just trust that it'll keep working, not have to kind of think about it yeah. day to day. Yeah, it's amazing to see that I'm sure there, there are some, where a lot of mobile applications have a standard kind of procedures and, and, and capabilities that they that they need. And once you don't have to think about that and you can kind of iterate that, I'm sure what you see, I guess, I guess a lot of developers or a lot of founders, whoever use the platform doing consistently at, over time, then you kind of just build towards that. And I'm, I'm interested in the chat GPT. Obviously it's huge. We're thinking about AI and a lot of people are integrating AI into and, and using it in ways to develop applications and websites and things along that nature. How does a company like yours think about working in tandem and how do you kind of allow 
or, 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 or integrate the capabilities of it in a way that it maximizes or, or is able to impact whoever's developing on the platform to do so either just more effectively, more efficiently, or, and not substitute it out and, and not things get not too conflated because it's, it's such a robust system to integrate within your platform. So what, what does that do not only now, but in the future of Dunkable? So for, for us, anytime we take on an integration, we do a couple of things. One, we, we try and build it in a, in a way that's really robust and lets you harness the power of it. But one of the things we also do is try to figure out what are the most kind of obvious use cases? What are the main ways people wanted to use it? One of the things that, that you mentioned, which is, which is true, is we get to see a lot of people building on a platform like ours. And so Man. we are able to kind of understand what are best practices, how are people using things, and apply it at scale so the next person who comes to us has the benefit of the last million people that have built on us and what they've done to say, oh, okay, everyone's really wants buttons like this or uses it like this, or these are the kind of capabilities right. that are most valuable. And so we're able to really optimize for those use cases and make them really effective. So when you talk about the, the new AI capabilities or, or, or any, any new kind of capabilities that come out in the market, yeah. For us, what we try and do is say, talk to users and understand how do you want to use this? What is this going to unlock for you that's going to make your life better? And then we try and build those integrations in the, in the ways that make it really quick and easy and effective for people to, to build what they're, what they're trying to build with, with, with the tools that they, that we've provided. So if you look at, as you talked about with this, the new AI stuff around chat GPT, et cetera, we've said, okay. What's really cool, people want to build interfaces in their app where you're able to kind of have a dialogue within the app. You're able to yeah. chat some message and get a result, whether it's textual or, or visual. So we should make it really easy to just say, hey, when I type something into, into a, a kind of text box and submit it, I'm able to make a request directly to, 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 to chat GPT, get back the results and display it. Well, I'm able to make a request and ask for something visual and get the visual result back and display it. And so... It's something that we've just made super simple and said, hey, when you when you put in get 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 the result that that you want and display it really easily, right? So for us, we've said, what's the use case? How do people actually want to use this? Let yeah. let us do that research, that underlying research of what's the most effective way to use it. And then let's build the the integrations that 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 allow that. And I think that's again a really nice thing about no code tools is we've done a lot of the heavy lifting of how do people want to use it, how do they want to interact with it, et cetera. We've built yeah. that out and then given you the flexibility to just take that and, and stick that right into your, your apps and experiences. Yeah, that's incredible. And, and tell us a little bit more about the traction of the company. Obviously, you, you recently announced a, a huge a funding round, which congrats on that. It's exciting to see what you'll take that and how you yeah. use it, of course. But tell us about what the traction has been up to, up to this point and what in particular are you excited leading up to this year? How many people are building on your platform? How many applications have come from it? And, and how, how many companies you mentioned earlier, you see a lot of them on the app store, increasing in amount of downloads, amount of users. What's, what's exciting about this next part of the journey? Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredibly exciting to watch the, the growth of no code, of course, and the growth of Funkable within that we've seen at this point, three and a half million people who have made apps on our platform. Wow. And it's, it's incredible when you think of the, the number wow. of folks we've enabled and empowered to yeah. build. And what's so cool is when you look at what they're building, it's individuals with cool ideas. It's kids in schools all the way up to a, a huge number of the Fortune 500s who are saying, hey, we need to make our processes more optimized, more efficient, especially in the, the way the world is going. Everyone's pushed to do more with less. And so by having a, a platform like ours, when I, as, I, as I said before, when you can kind of really focus the, the folks who need to be building the app to be the people who have the ideas, who, who are the creatives, who are the ones who are looking yeah. to really, really make a difference. And when you can say, hey, let's make the app building process really efficient yeah. and, and give the tools to the people who need it the most to actually build it, it's super cool. So we've seen, like I said, three and a half million people build millions of apps. I think at this point, it's actually it's over 10 million apps just of, of every kind and shape and size. And we have a significant percentage of the apps on the app stores, both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store that have actually been built using us. And like I said, it's every kind of app from tiny, tiny apps with single digit downloads that are just made for a small group of 
five folks who are working together, all the way up to huge apps with millions of downloads, influencers who are using us to, to, to work with their audiences and, and massive companies that are working to enable everyone internally to be able to, to kind of be on the same page and use internal app. It's, it's, it, it's so cool and, and so powerful. And I mean, there, there's so many stories I can talk about, just but, but really robust. And what's, what's fun is also the problems that are being solved are yeah. problems that we couldn't have imagined in our wildest dreams. And you we saw the whole reason to make a platform is so that you can enable these use cases that you never imagined, right? Yeah. And so we've just seen these incredible problems globally that, that we didn't even know about that, that have now been solved because we've unlocked the power for folks who had an idea and never knew how to code to actually be able to build apps to solve the problems that are the most yeah. important and impactful to them. Yeah, yeah. And tell us a little bit about what are some of the biggest challenges that Thuckable faces today? That, that's, a, that's a great question. I think like any business, you, you always want to make sure that you're able to get to the folks who need you the most and deliver to them the, 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 perfect, the perfect solution for, for, for what they need. So I think for us, challenges always, I think, Hiring is always a challenge, finding the best yeah. people out there. We've, we've been fortunate to be hiring and, and, and are always looking to, to hire more and find the best people. And then I think also, as I've said, for us, it's, it's all about being a cutting edge tool, keeping up the cutting edge technology. And yeah. so for us, we're always trying to make sure that whatever, whatever technology is coming out, we're assessing it quickly and deciding, is this the future? And is this something our users want to use? And if so, how do we as quickly as possible incorporate it into our systems and make sure that we're kind of building the, the best and most comprehensive tools? Yeah. And then I think the last piece, which we really feel like we, we, we get right, but we're always questioning is just that right balance of being the most powerful tool out there that enables anyone and everyone to do what they want while being simple enough that anyone can use us, right? And yeah. really striking that balance. It's always a, a fine needle to thread, but it's always something that we're thinking about and making sure we're offering the most rich and robust capabilities while still being accessible to anyone who has an idea and wants to build an app. Yeah, yeah. And if everything goes well, what's the long-term vision for Thunkable? For us, it's about building a, a, a large self-sustaining company that enables anyone and everyone to build software the way they want so long it's been kind of the, the, the haves and the have nots in, 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 in software have been the people who can create the software and the people who can use the software. And we're really trying to bridge that divide and take, as I said, take passive consumers of technology and turn them into active creators. Take people who have ideas and give them the tools so that they don't need to wait on developers. They don't need to pay oodles and oodles of money and, and wait for months on end to get somebody who's going to help them, they can come up with the idea and then go build the ideas and see those ideas come to life and come to life quickly. And yeah. we are excited to be the platform that enables everyone to build what they are looking to build. So for us, it's building a long-term, huge, robust, sustainable company that, that is building software that gives so much value to our users that, that they, they can't live without it. And it allows us, it allows the world to unlock the creative, the creativity yeah. and the possibilities uh, that are ahead. If you look at where we are in the world of software, we're still in, in, the, in, the, in the early, early days of, of software development in general, right? You look at kind of technologies that have existed for tens, hundreds, thousands of years and how people have refined them over time, right? The, the, the web we're talking about, right, is, 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 is barely 30 years old, right? It's still for you. It, it, mobile apps, smartphones, right? 2007, 2008. Right, it's still very early days for these technologies, and we're excited to be the platform that enables people to build the future of of, of technology, and that and that's the company that that we're building here. Amazing! I always like the next section. I call it my founder FAQ. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of a rapid fire questions, and and we'll see where we get. But first question is, what are what's one or two of your favorite apps that have been built on Thuckable? Great question. I think a couple of my favorite for a few different reasons. So one is one is an app made by, by a TikTok star. She had she thought she's a person draws and had and had a great kind of TikTok following, but wasn't able to monetize that at scale because of the fact that she didn't 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 necessarily have the wasn't necessarily gaining the the money that she needed from sponsorships, etc. 
built an app on Thunkable to engage with their followers, ended up getting tens of thousands of downloads, ended up generating so much revenue from that that it allowed her to go full-time to make her content better, et cetera. And the reason I love this is because it was somebody who was super talented, had ideas, had a vision, didn't yeah. quite know how to harness that, used Thunkable to build an app, to engage directly with her fans and followers, and now is able to do this full time and, and has enabled her to, to kind of live out her dreams and her passions. An, another, another app that I, that I really love is, is actually one that there's a, there's a large Fortune 500 company that, that needed to optimize delivery routes. And so they found Thunkable and it was an operations manager who was a person with no software background, found Thunkable, started building for his drivers and, and empowered them and now has empowered a whole fleet of drivers to have better and optimized routes because of the app he built with Thunkable. The reason I love that is because it's just somebody who had an idea and wasn't trying to kind of build a billion dollar business or whatever. It's just, I have an idea. I want to make my life better and more efficient. Built an app using Thunkable to do that. And all of a sudden unlocked a bunch of creativity and a bunch of kind of efficiencies within an already existing business because of the fact that he had the tool. And then maybe the last app I'll talk about is one that, that that's one of the earlier apps that was built on Dunkable, but I still really love, which was a, a gentleman in the in the country of Yemen didn't know how to code, but Yemen was in civil war and and they needed apps to help basically their power management, figuring out if they were actually yeah. going to be able to maintain their power overnight. There was there was war, a lot of the power grids was going down. And this was a problem, as as I talked about earlier, where problems that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. This was a whole problem in the country of Yemen. I didn't know it existed. This, this amazing gentleman, Anwar, but, you know, at the age of 24, builds an app with us. Half a million families and businesses end up using him, his app. He ends up getting an award from one of the ministers of, I forget the title of, of, of energy, minister of power, I think, because he helped alleviate Yemen's energy crisis. And this was all because he was a man who had a problem, had an idea, didn't know how to solve it, found Thunkable and was able to build a solution to help make his country a better place. And that, th- those examples are, are so unique to me each for, for what they've done and also just so exciting and showing up kind of the power of Thunkable's, uh, of, of, Th- of Thunkable's platform, whether for individual creators, somebody within a massive organization or someone who's trying to you know, make their country a better place. That's incredible to hear about, yeah, the, the, the ease and ability for individuals who see a problem in the world to, to use a platform like Thunkable and then to, to create solutions around them. I mean, that's I, yeah, I don't know what more satisfaction you can get out of that as a founder, but that, that's, that's pretty much at the height of it. That, that's, next question is, there's obviously a bunch of no-code platforms out there and, and a bunch of companies building these, these amazing, robust tools. How do you think about competition in regards to what the other's building or what your consumer's building? Do you think about what other competitors are building or do you kind of focus on optimizing your current users and, and you know, getting the feedback from them on what to build and what to build next? And or are you pushing the vision past that and beyond that and then kind of following up? How do you kind of think about the competitors or in, in the whole development process when, when thinking about no code is, 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 it's not a complete red sea space, but it's becoming more and more like that. Absolutely. I think the cool part about no code and especially when we started was that it was a small and nascent space. And now, as you said, everybody's coming in, building no code tools, et cetera. But Still, I think if you look at the biggest competition to no code, it's really one inertia. It's doing nothing. If I have an idea, I sue Arn, I don't do it. Two is hiring out, hiring out offshore teams and things like that. And I think what's 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 great about no code tools is our our favorite folks who come to us and start using us are actually people who have already used no code tools. And they say, Hey, I've already used no code. I understand how it works, but I don't have the tools I've been using don't support what Dunkable does. And I think Dunkable is really in a in my mind, we're, we're in a category of our own where if, if you want what we do, we do it better than anybody else, but it is, it is this cross-platform native mobile app development with the ability to publish to the app stores and kind of live test as you're building your apps, plugging into your hardware, working offline, all that stuff. If you want that, there, there's nobody better out there than we are. And, and so for us, we actually love a, a lot of the no-code tools out there because yeah. they, they really are, it, it is such a, it's such a huge space that we we want you to build your your website using a no code tool and build your infrastructure and back end pipeline tools using no code tools and build your front end of your mobile apps using using a no code tool like Thunkable. And so for us, we we find that the, that the competition actually helps us more than hurts us. In that, if you find somebody in our in the no code space and you've decided you like no code, then when you need to do the things that Thunkable does, because we do it better than anybody else, you'll end up coming to us. And so I think. <laughs> That's how I see the the competition, especially 
folks who started in the early, it's a small, it's a small group of folks. A lot yeah. of us know each other fairly well and yeah. didn't like, 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 like each other's tools. And we just support different use cases. And, and, and I think to your point though, now it's becoming a really, really haunt space. A lot of companies in, in the market that are doing really niche things. Anything for us, it's about keeping our mission of being the most robust and, and powerful no code platform to build native mobile apps and continuing pushing the envelope on making sure we're really dealing with bleeding edge, techno edge technologies and we are the most robust tool out there. And I think as long as we are listening to our users, what their needs are, and, and we are, and we are plugging that with kind of the most powerful and exciting software out there. And, and, and we're continually doing that. We feel really confident and excited about our long-term future yeah. amongst all of these other no-code tools that are working to solve just tremendous, a tremendous number of problems out there. Yeah, I love that. And thinking about your business model, I'm curious on how you've thought about that and where you landed. And it was always the same from, from the conception. A lot of no-code platforms either do compute power and, and kind of the more, you, the more you use, the more expensive it becomes. But if you use less, obviously there's a trade-off or just having user seeds or having access to the platform altogether. How, how did you land, or what's your current business model and, and how did you come to land on that? And has it always been the same? Yeah, that's a great question. Business models are, are always evolving for companies. For us, you, we have kind of two different sides of the business. There's the, there's the more B2C side selling to the sure. individuals, people with ideas, founders like folks who are listening to us right now who say, I have an idea. I don't have a crazy amount of money, but I, I want to tinker with something. I want to build. I want to build quickly. And, and that's really kind of our, our individual plans that yeah. are focused on individuals with ideas. And, and that, and that, that kind of, we have our starter plan and kind of our, our more robust plan for, for more ro robust builders. And that's really focused around the, the individual building experience. And so those plans are really focused on one person comes in, has an idea, wants to go to conception of to publishing an app in, in the app store. And then we have our, our team focus plan and that, and that, and those are, those are really focused on larger companies, people with ideas, teams who are trying to work together. Someone's designing the app. Someone else is actually building the app on Thunkable. And, and for them, there's a lot of capabilities you think around visitation, around organization, collaboration, administration of, of, of the product, thinking about kind of the individuals who seats for individuals building the app, as well as seats for individuals using the app, especially if you're thinking about internal tools, right? And so kind of we have it split into kind of the, the tools for personal use and then yeah. tools for kind of lar larger company use. And, 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 and that's how we, we price based on folks who are um, using, using our platform, as well as folks who are using um, the apps that they build. Yeah. In terms of has it been the same over time, it, it, it's evolved over time. When we started, um, you know, initially we, we had a bunch of free features for, for folks to come in and use the platform. As we built more robust, really professional features, we, we built out the individual plans when it was really an individual player experience. And then we added on kind of the multiplayer plans as we started growing within organizations and recognizing that kind of those, those features were needed, the more, more robust security and versioning and things like that. And, and so we've, I'd say our plans have, have stayed consistent over time, but the types of plans and the types of things that we offer have grown as our product has grown. Yeah, it's, it's incredible that to see kind of as the product grows where not only how people are using it, but where they're using it and then how those different individuals maybe need certain features. And, and I feel like that unlocks a whole different set of, I, I guess, challenges, issues, whatever you may call them as you grow there. Um, I, I, I know we're coming to the close of the episode here. So I want to ask, because I always love how founders extract knowledge and, and what they ingest and, and how they extract knowledge from the things that they ingest. But whether it was early in your career or now, what books or people have influenced you the most? There are so many of them. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a great question. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a few that I liked in terms of books and, and a few people who, who have been instrumental. I think in terms of books, I've liked, I'd say early days reading Andy Grove from Intel High Output Management, just on how to think about building organizations and companies. And it, it's just, it's, it's a, it's just a straightforward kind of thinker of that. I really like Ed Catmull's book on how he built Pixar, I think that was just great to hear the founder's story in there. And I really, I really enjoy, I really enjoy that book. And then in terms of people, I think when I was, when I was very fortunate to be at MIT, I think the, the, the advisors I had there were just some of the most incredible and foundational people in, 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 in the world of technology. So 
worked with a gentleman named Hal Abelson, who who's in, in many ways the, the godfather of open source, one of the creators of the Creative Commons, the Free Software Foundation, et cetera. And so, and he thought a lot about how software gets built and kind of helped me think a lot about how software gets built. Mm -hmm. um, Tim Berners-Lee, one of the, 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 the guy credited with created the World Wide Web, he was another one of our, our advisors in our lab and, and you're kind of thinking about, okay, how did you build the web, right? Like yeah. what, a, what a fascinating concept to think of. And, and then again, when I was talking about how kind of new this stuff is like, it wasn't, it, it's not that long ago that, that he built it. And so having him there to, to help it and mentor us, I think a, a couple of folks there that were just really important and valuable. And then I think over the, the, the years I've had, I mean, my, my co-founder way, he's, he's, he's incredibly bright and incredibly good at challenging me on the things I think about and it's helped kind of shape my thought process and my thing. So those are, those are a few of the, just, just many, many, many folks out there who have just had an incredible impact on my, on my thinking and, and how I, I approach building software and building companies. Amazing. Arun, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. And I, I can ask you 10, if not a hundred more questions, not only with your experience, but your do them for no code and, and where kind of, you know, software and development and, and, and products are being and built and where it's going. But obviously you have to close the episode out. So last little bit here is where can the audience find you? Where can we, where can we be part of Thunkable? Give us your websites, your LinkedIn, your Twitters, give us all the plugs where not only we can support you as a founder, but we can start playing with the, the product and the platform and maybe even start building something. Awesome. Absolutely. I mean, step one, go to thunkable.com, start building today, T-H-U-N-K-A-B-L-E, thunkable.com. And, and you can log in, you can create an account, you can start building. And that's, I think, where to be. In terms of Thunkable, you can find everything. Thunkable is our handle everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you go there, you'll find us. We're, we're, we're on the internet. We're very findable. Myself, Arun, you can find me. My hang -in handle is AK Seigel everywhere. So you find on Twitter, you'll find AK Seigel on on, 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 on LinkedIn, you'll find me there. Connect with me, reach out. I, I love working with and supporting entrepreneurs, founders, people with ideas who are looking to get to the next stages and, and Thunkable is, is often a tool in their toolkits. And so if there's a way Thunkable can help, a way I can help, very, very excited to do so. Amazing, Arun. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you and not only learning your entrepreneurial journey early on, but also currently what you're working on at Thunkable and who you're helping and who you're enabling. So been such a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed yourself and thank you again for being on the show. Julian, it's my treat to be here. Thanks so much for having me and excited to, uh, to do this again sometime. Of course.